I'm ready if y'all are. Can everybody We're ready. Go? Okay. Um, I sent the documents out a couple. First of all, I want to apologize for being a couple minutes late. I thought it was via Zoom, so I drove all the way to pretty much Spring Hill and came back. But but we're here. We made it. We're doing it. Um, we've got the summary page. We sent out the budget by object code. Something that we did today that we hadn't done previously or sent out was a review of current year savings. We did find current year savings with subs, We um, also with legal fees, also with diesel, gas, a lot of line items there are savings, but there are also areas in which we are we have already overexpended, which we're going to have to do cleanup to move line items from where we saved to the line items in which we're over. And the main line item really is salaries. And, and when we took that attrition out, right now we're looking at projected to be over by about 400, 500,000 in that teacher's line item. Uh, Shifra, she's on her way. Is that her right there? That's perfect. So I wanna, she went in detail. She has the exact line items if there are, there are any questions. But I think what we're really looking at from the savings that we have are just going to cover overages in other areas. It, the overages exceeded the amount of savings we had. So that's where we're at right now with that. Um, I've laid out these three proposals. Um, we have the department heads here um, to discuss their budgets. If there are questions or if they would like to present, I'm going to kind of leave that up to the school board and the department heads. Right now, if we did pass a proposal three, um, I, would, I don't know if it came over clearly on the uh, email of why the revenue number here is lower, uh, but that was because of our sales tax. Yes, currently budgeted is 16.8 million in sales tax, but that's because the commission has to allocate maintenance of effort, which means they have to at least budget maintenance of effort. But the truth is, is across the state, we're seeing decreases in sales tax and states passing down that cut your budgets on sales tax. So the recommendation, some people have done it 30 to 40 percent, some people are doing it 15 to 20 percent. I have put in a figure that is 27 and a half percent based on looking at current businesses in the area and how they're doing working with Murray Alliance. And they've done surveys of their businesses to find out if sales are down. Uh, I think 144 of those businesses responded and 44 percent of those businesses are having issues. We're seeing sales go up in Kroger, Home Depot, Lowe's. Those sales are up, but there are a lot of businesses. Murray County is a manufacturing community, and our largest ta taxpayers are manufacturers, and we're not building anything. So that's a, a, a big hurt for us. So we do have our, our sales tax. If we pull in the reality of how much we could lose, because our sales tax is such a large number, when you take 27.5 percent of it, it comes out to losing $4.62 million. And that's off last year's revenue. So with that, it, it puts the, the rest of everything that we're doing in a tough situation. Last October, I've probably said this too many times, but we only had $235,000 in fund balance at the end of October 2019. It was reported on financials and everything. But what was good is it was a, the first fiscal year that we, in a long time, that we didn't need a tax anticipation note to reach payroll, but we made it by that much. So I'm going to kind of just uh, step away. I, I want to open it up for questions. I can take any questions when it comes to uh, budgeting for uh, staffing, um, benefits. Um, I guess that's staffing and benefits. And then the department heads pretty much have all the line items 300 and above, and they've got their requests. And I think it's important to hear what they have to say, because if our revenues start looking better and, and everything starts coming back, we are go going to see money come in and budget amendments can come forward to the school board to allocate money towards uh, priority. Uh, you know, uh, whether it be from the school board, department heads, wherever it comes from, when there is an influx of money and, and we're projecting to be better uh, and we, we've got plans for the future, we can allocate funds when it starts to look better and be proactive rather than reactive and wait until the entire year's up. So um, 
I guess that's yeah. my uh, one of the documents you gave us said that there were raises included in the uh, um, the ask for central office. Um, what might those be? Are there any new positions? There, in the department head request column, there are raises included. There are new positions. This was all before COVID-19. Uh, there there's a lot of staffing that, honestly, they're just underpaid for what they do. Mm -hmm. They need realigned. Um, uh, the teachers, I know you had brought up a, a pace plan. There, yes. There's pay plans for both support and classified. You know, we had a lot of ideas and a lot of things rolling to make things equal and, and fair and 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 look at funding those things and um, that's what's in the department head request because that's what the department heads say hey this is truly what I need to function properly so but that was uh, before we are wearing masks at meetings and I think what you said though as we go along and sales tax increases and we have some maybe have some opportunities to come back that what I think we would like to know what those requests are do we not? Or do, is, y'all are kind of looking blank at me here. Do we need to know what was in that big ask of 109 million or, uh, Mr. Moore? Sorry. It was loose. Um, if we were talking about still looking at that number, yes, I would agree. But at this point, I'm not, I'm just not that interested in spending a lot of time chasing that out down. Maybe at a later date, but right now I think we've got bigger things to worry about in the immediacy of figuring out how we make these numbers match up. Can, can I go ahead and ask a question, if, if you don't mind? One of the things, Doug, that you had said you would ask about, um, you said that um, payroll was higher. Now, higher uh, the number is higher, so we've got to make up some ground there. Is that because we were light on the estimations from last year, or is it because they came in and there's been extra payroll expenses that we weren't anticipating? Because I know we kind of played with the numbers last year and there were some estimates. And Is that, is that where this is coming from? So in the original budget, um, when we first couldn't provide a 1% raise, $500,000 of attrition was put into the budget, which is, is, are supposed to be savings that we would realize from turnover uh, in, in the 116 line item. After that, we, we additionally, we were sent back, uh, executive team worked together, cut some line items, and made the 1% raise happen. But in doing that, also increased att attrition an additional 300000 So we budgeted for $800,000 in attrition. In the past, we have, but I know that we have budgeted for $500,000. We, we've met that number before. But right now, we're projected to basically be short in that line by about a half a million dollars. Thank you. Dr. Marzak? Yeah. We also haven't received growth money yet from the state of Tennessee. Jennifer Morgan is cleaning up all of our numbers. It's so far, we're 150 students over where we were August 1st. So 150 students times almost $7,400 is about $660,000. She's still cleaning up some schedules with regards to Spring Hill. So that number is expected to rise. So once that number gets in there, then we have to contact Mary and Dursky and find out exactly what that amount that's going to be coming in. And it comes in the last week in June. Which, which, would, which would make us closer to reaching what we need for the step raises. If we get that, those that days. would increase our revenue right. so that uh, it would be less of a hit on us. Yeah. Right. Uh, the way the budget sits right now, if we approved step raises and uh, funded the benefits increase due to giving those step raises, we would have to supplant CARES Act funds by $1.6 million, uh, which would leave 310000 of CARES Act funds to try to fulfill a plan to educate children in the fall, and students in the fall. The plan that was presented uh, last Friday with uh, Dr. Miller, Scott Gaines, and Chris Seal. And so they had some variations of that plan, but I didn't see any of them where it said it only cost 300000 but, yeah. Any other questions here? Is there a path then, considering the money from that, a path to us to being able to pass a budget that will have the step raises using some of fund balance. So
so we we would be using uh, fund balance to make this happen. Uh, this is the 1.6 million that we have to supplant is just so that the state will pass our budget. Um, we have to have at least 3% of our fund balance sitting there for right. us to be able to use whatever's above that 3% to balance our budget. So, so with that, um, my projected ending fund balance for this year, uh, we started this fiscal year at nine and a half million. I am projecting that if we spend everything that is left in our budget, which we usually spend a little less than that, mm -hmm. and if we get all the revenue that's in our that's budgeted, which we usually get a little more than that, I'm being conservative that we're going to have a two $2 million deficit this year. I've got seven point one million in the sheet uh, on the summary sheet right there, and if you uh, less the proposal three uh, deficit, which is that five million five hundred ninety nine thousand, which is the step raises and benefits, then that leaves us with this much in fund balance. So to make up that ground, that's how much we're short. That's how much we would have to supplant from CARES Act funds. And what we would do, how we would do that, is we would reduce our 141 expenditures by that much because our 142 fund is our federal fund, and the budget is going to be increased in there because the CARES Act fund is going to run through title. Yeah. So you, okay, so you're saying that, that we could pass a budget and, and we'd be able to meet that budget. And then somehow down the road, though, we're, we, we're hoping as sales tax picks up, revenues pick up, then we'd be able to add in, like we did last year when we saw that we had some fund balance expense. You came and gave us a surprise um, that we could spend some money on some things we had to take out of the budget. So if we, if we have sales tax increase and projections looking better than expected, then those funds can start to, to give back the, those budgets that we supplanted from the CARES Act. And so if we ended up doing better than $1.6 million, we could actually leave the CARES Act money alone and, and we can operate as on our own. Another thing is we've been talking about sales tax with the cities, uh, City of Spring Hill, City of Mount Pleasant, and uh, City of Columbia. Honestly, if, if just Columbia passed theirs for just one year, we wouldn't have to supplant any of the CARES Act funds, and that's being conservative. That, that's, that's reducing what we would get even by 27.5%. I don't know how likely it is that it will be passed, and, and I don't necessarily think we should rely on it. Um, Spring Hill and Mount Pleasant together could not make up the ground Columbia could on its own. But it, every dollar would help reduce the amount that we would have to supplant from CARES Act funds to make it happen. When we passed the sales tax increase, they have to give us a portion of it. Did, wasn't that part of how it was written? I'm really confused about that. It, it was written to pay for current indebtedness for schools and future indebtedness for paying off schools. So it rolls into the county debt service fund. Right in there I've got um, budgeted 1.8 million due to that because I, I wasn't, it was 3.6 million when we didn't have this going on and we were looking at 27.5% decrease now. So to be conservative I, I budgeted about half that and then if it comes back I'll raise that budget. But it is going in there to um, to pay debt service on school current school bonds. Okay. So. Okay. So, um, is there any discussion here, uh, Mr. Fulbright? This is going to show my ignorance of accounting. The money that's coming in from growth that Dr. Marzak referred to, will that go to address this current year's budget that looks like it's going to have a deficit? or will that roll into next year's budget even though we receive it at the end of June, which is in this fiscal year? So we receive our estimates for next year. Our, our final estimate for last year was 59260000 so they pay it out over 10 payments. So we get $5,926,000 a month. And so once that we get that increase, uh, it'll be reflected in next year's budget. Is revenue. that money reflected in this? Of these figures at all? Yes, the most recent letter that we got from uh, the Tennessee Department of Ed, which we had the April number in here, which was higher than our May number, but then we were reached out to, they had made a mistake on the April number on the rates that they sent, and so they sent a correction 
and uh, the the May amount is actually lower than the April amount. But as Dr. Marzak said, Jennifer is working on the ADMs to uh, basically appeal that number and see what we can get. And the estimation is that we'll get 60 million at least. Is that what you're saying? Okay. So uh, right now we're at about 59 and a half million for next year. Well, the next step would be to, to put the budget on the agenda for the board meeting for us to pass it, because, and then we'd be on schedule for the commission's timetable as well. We, we're under a mandate to by the comptroller to have a budget by, they, all of us have a budget by the end of June. Uh, I see no more light. <laughs> uh, yes. Please come up here. Okay, I didn't see it. I, I just want to say on the CARES Act funding, other than the guidance that we've already received that you saw that the uh, intent and purpose was, you know, for the reopening and continuous learning of school, we hadn't received any more guidance yet. They're still releasing guidance. So that may have an impact on how we can use those funds. So. Uh, just to say that arbitrarily we can, we'll be able to supplant some things. There is a no, uh, there's not a supplement supplant rule for these funds, but there are some guidelines I think that you saw how we can spend those funds. So until, I, I would say, I would caution just saying we're going to use CARES Act funds until we get more guidance. Hopefully, you know, it was the, the guidance was due out on the 18th and it's still not out yet. I, I think there is some discussion from, uh, uh, various organizations about uh, the way the calculations were done for private schools and so or the way the federal government interpreted how much the uh, private schools should be allotted or non-public schools so that's kind of been pushed back and it's up in the air and that's why the guidance final guidance hasn't been released yet okay Some, something that we we have done is, is I've emailed the executive team because there are a few things we know that we can spend on it, that are our softwares and enable online learning, digital learning. And so we're trying as an executive team to make sure that we're gathering the cost of softwares and digital integration and that would be the cost that we would supplant to try to make it work because they are eligible for CARES Act funds but they just so happen to be things that we already have to enable digital learning. Um, so I sent a request out to department heads to send in those type of softwares that enable digital learning, uh, such as we've got School Messenger, Raptor, Akita Box, um, Alavie is one of them. We've got a list of, of softwares that we're looking for in which it enables the school district to work digitally. Um, so we're trying to narrow that down, but you know the the 1.6 million that we need. I don't know that we'll find 1.6 million in software and digital integration stuff that we already do that we would be able to reach that amount. So, so I would I would agree with Scott. And Ms. Parker, do you want? Um, so I'm gonna make a little detour first. But um, so this is just our GP budget. What about the food service and capital? Do we already? I mean. Is that all done? We, um, we, the day that we dismissed school, we were supposed to present that that night. Right. Um, the food services budget, Brian actually talked to me today. Of course, it's self-funded, so it's all based on the revenue that he takes in. He's going to have to dip into his fund balance quite a bit because we've served, what did we say, 283,000 meals since we've been out but we didn't serve about 900,000 meals that we would have normally served, and he is quite in the hole based off of where we would be. Um, we can bring those numbers back. It was basically the same budget that he's had in the past just based on we think we're going to serve this many meals and this is what our cost for staffing and food is. Uh, the capital budget I know you've actually taken already uh, to the uh, to the commission just to look at what we were asking for um, the, Just kind of what we had turned in and, and I think it's buses and uh, and the normal uh, Santa Fe's heating and cooling was on there uh, the original capital budget that we had uh, I actually have and it is 
it was um, a total of what we have, and I don't have it pulled up right now. It was a total of $93 million, but it included a new McDowell and it included Spring Hill High School. So when you back those things out, you're, you're quite significant, 64,000 or 64 million, I think, down. Um, but we had given that to Doug. I think the commission sort of said, you gotta give us something. So we just, he just presented what we had asked for in our initial proposal. And that's all it was, was the buses, um, which we do every year, and then the, the major HVAC projects that we had done or we were asking for, which is, it was four schools, but Santa Fe was the one that we kind of noted and said, it's not going to live, it has to be redone. Um, and if we funded it this year, we can't do it till next summer because it requires a complete shutdown of the building. If it's not funded this year, it will not make it two years. We know that. So th those were the only things. And I can send you that. I think you have that as well. Yeah, we we can send that. The, the other thing is that it was just for presentation. The commission just wanted to see it. They did not make a decision on, on any request that night. The actual meeting to make decisions on those requests is going to be on June 4th. Uh, the financial management board meets that same night and will we'll pass basically a, a recommendation to the budget committee and then that budget committee will meet immediately after to make decisions on the capital budget. Well, we have to approve that capital budget. The board should have to, I mean, even though I know, I understand it was an ask at the time to kind of give them an idea, but we, we shouldn't send something to them that we haven't approved. I, I would agree that, that you all should send a budget to them, yes. Okay, and also the cafeteria budget needs to be approved. That's correct. So all of that needs to be on the agenda for the June meeting. And, and the, the total of the, the capital budget was $93 million eight. 86, but 67 million of that were the two school projects. Uh, 25 million were HVAC, uh, things that had to happen. Um, and then, and we're doing some partials. You approved Spring Hill Elementary uh, to do some loop service, which we had asked for in the capital. We were going to ask for a, a complete redo, but we think we can go at least two more years by doing a partial. So we've covered some things and then buses, and we had asked for 12 buses at 1.2. So the total was 93 million. But we'll send that to you in the food service as well. Okay, thank you. Mr. Moore. Uh, if I could ask, I, I know this gets into a tricky thing when the commission is asking for something, but I would just ask that in the future, if they ask for just a number, if it's not something we presented, I think the answer should be, I don't have that, or the board hasn't approved that. Because it puts us, in my opinion, in a very awkward position when you've given information, even though it may be what we ultimately do, it puts us in an awkward position, and, and in the past we've gotten into this, where they said, well, this was brought to us. I mean, this is what we had. And, you know, as a board, we didn't pass that. And again, I'm not, I'm not saying to you, but in the future, I mean, I know it probably puts you in a tough position, but I think it's responsible from the board's aspect to, if they ask us, well, give me just some numbers, I think the answer is no, if we haven't sent it over there. Um, I just think it puts us in a big kind of gray area where it gets you in trouble, gets us in trouble, for things that haven't even been passed out of the board yet. It's just very uncomfortable, and it's a lot of room for misinterpretation or someone taking something and uh, kind of running with it when it's not. Because I, mean, I know I've already heard from people in the community about at that board meeting, you know, talking about McDowell or, or talking about things that, you know, again, we never sent that over there. Um, so it just kind of puts it, I would, I would just ask that if that's possible to just defer that back to the board hasn't given me that, so we don't have it. I'd be fine to do that in the future. Uh, to clarify what happened, I sent everything, everything okay. that was on the list uh, th that was it, it, that was basically presented to, for y'all that night that was canceled, okay. uh, and and I know that that can cause problems too. So, thank you. Um, I appreciate yep, that. I'm I'm good to to not present that or, or uh, and I kind of did it because I knew they weren't voting that night and that it wasn't going to, you know, they weren't making decisions. So, but in, in the future, of course. Ms. Parker. Oh. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. So, uh, board, something else to uh, consider and think about. Um, Mr. Lindsay has sent me an email expressing an interest in the full-time chief of staff position. Um, he stated a salary that he would like to see. It's a little bit higher than the salary study from 2019. But um, his current salary is about $80,000. That's low uh, as per the salary study that was done uh, last spring of 2019. Um, I would like, would just basically just want the board to consider a salary somewhere around, uh, the salary study said the mid-range uh, was about 98826 
So something else to consider uh, when you're talking about the budget moving forward is that 105 line for the uh, chief of staff position. Is that already included in the budget? No, ma'am, not yet. Just wanted to present it first and see how the board felt about it and see what they thought. Okay. Any discussion? Is our current superintendent hiring our future chief of staff? Uh, no, he asked for the position. We haven't talked about it yet. And so I just wanted to bring it to the board because it's a budget consideration. So something to think about. And I know Ms. Kinzer was included on an email. It, you think he's doing a good job? So. I think he's doing an excellent job. And But I do I think Ms. Parker makes a good point. We're a month away from possible change and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and maybe have a clearer picture at that time as to what the finances are as well. Yes, I think... I think he's doing a great job. I think that, that he has bridged the gap as far as the employees. As the, he, he has worked really hard to get confidence in the system and try to straighten all that out. And um, I think probably the salary studies showed that it was low. Uh, but I'm not really sure where that medium point should be. And I, I give to you to, to help us to know where that should be. Your lights on. Do you okay. Or, or if anybody else wants to speak on that, I'll. Anyone else? Just, just to clarify, were you saying there's in the budget for next year there is no chief of staff position budgeted at all, or just the differential is there? The differential Dif is in the department head request. And then the other proposal is just what it's currently making now. Okay, so if, if we were to stay status quo, it's going to be about the the 80 number is what's That's in correct. there. No other change. Okay, sorry, I was thinking for a second. You guys said you took the whole thing out. No. So so the difference is eighteen thousand eight hundred eighteen dollars. That's the difference. If you want to go with the mid range, it's part of the salary study. I would say implement uh, the recommended mid-rate salary as per the salary study and then have the new superintendent post the job. If Mr. Lindsay, I know he's interested in applying for the job, I know he would apply. Yes. Other candidates would probably apply and the new superintendent would be able to do interviews and then make the determination moving forward. And, and, and we'd have an opportunity to look at the salary as well at that point. Is that okay? All right. All right. Thank you. I would think the new superintendent would, that would be in their purview. Posting it and I don't know. Well, I think that's what we've gotten into, that issue in the past where something has gotten posted and then it's, or a contract has been offered and then we've gotten locked into having to do a budget amendment when a, a contract was offered that was higher than what was in our budget. Um, I think that happened with Ms. Gagliano, and we were put into a position where we had to decide um, at a meeting whether or not she was going to be retained. I don't want to put us in that position, but also when we're looking at a significant um, deficit that includes taking money out of fund balance, I just I can't commit to taking 18,000 additional dollars out to make sure somebody. I'm not saying that as well, but I am saying that, that Mr. Lindsay's done a great job, and and I, I want to be able to retain him. And well, I think that's the decision of the next superintendent. I, that's what I say. Yeah. That's the way I feel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but but I, you know whatever whatever we need to do, and but we need to post it and go through that process as well. But uh, Mr. Lindsay, we most appreciate that he walked into the circumstances he did, the situation he did, and and brought clarity to it. Uh, well, we'll move on. Anything? The budget? Are we ready then to anything else on the budget, Ms. Parker? Um, do we have any numbers yet on how many retirees we have? Will that include like a an amount for that? go 
does not include any payouts for any of the retirees yet, and since we don't have a cap on sick days, we can, if somebody has been with the district a very long time, we could probably be paying out two, 300 days of sick time. It's so, a person. So I, I'm going to text my payroll account, um, accountant real quick and see how many we have. But as far as detail numbers goes, if you all want to see that in dollars, we can put that out too. But it'll be probably tomorrow. Well, is it possible too for these retirees, if we were to put a hiring freeze on and not rehire some of those positions? I don't know what that would mean. If, if that's what you all want to advise all of us in the HR office, I'm sure. Well, I don't think here. that we can do that like necessarily like right now, but I'm just wondering what those numbers, if that will help make up okay. some of these deficits. Okay, so if you want to see how much the salaries are right now for these employees if we didn't hire them. Okay. Along with payouts. That, that's kind of what we've used as attrition in the past. In the past. Is, yeah. You know, it's a, you know they're, they're at the upper end and you're, you're hiring into the lower end. And so, but uh, we did overestimate attrition. I, I, I take I, some responsibility. Sorry, <laughs> Mr. Chair. Um, Go ahead. I, I also, I, and I'm, I'm sure y'all already know this, but I think that's something we'd also need to consult w with Jake on whether that's a school board thing or a superintendent thing. I, I'm, I'm not sure. But as as the board that hires the superintendent, I'm, I don't think there would be a problem with uh, pushing for a hiring freeze. But I don't know if you've discussed it before with Jake or not. Well, and, and let me just say, I mean, we can talk about it as a hiring freeze or we can talk about it as eliminating positions. I don't know which way you want to do it. But I'm just thinking that that would be if we have people that are leaving and we don't we may not need to hire them back or we may not have the funds to hire them back. I don't want to take a superintendent role, but I do think from a budgeting standpoint, we've got to be, we got to look at where we can cut. And if we've got people that are walking out the door and we don't hire somebody back, I mean, you know, for example, I know last year we had a, a data person and I don't think we ever hired that person. Is that still included in the budget? All, all of the positions that were approved in the the original budget for this year are in the budget. Yes, we we the payroll numbers were were bounced off of the current roster that we have. That it, basically attrition or uh, halting hiring or cutting positions. Right. We did talk about that Monday in executive as an option as something we to throw out there. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if there's another. I don't know. Did you want to talk about it? Yeah, sure. Um, did, did the budget, this current budget, have we um, accounted for or changed since we were half a million shy for, because of attrition? Have we budgeted differently this year to make up that difference in case so, we do it again? So. If we go at the same funding as last year with, with these positions, there, there's still $800,000 of attrition in there because we, we took it. The last year's budget that I have in here is the budget that we had amended from the one that passed to account for and make the 1% raise happen. And in that cut was an additional 300000 of attrition on top of the usual 500000 So in this current budget, if if we pass the proposal for for step raises obviously i I've, I've been conservative on the cost of step step raises but it's not going to overcome $800,000 of attrition um we just have to have to make the attrition happen to to adjust for that or or reduce uh positions but the department head request budget has the positions in there and there is no attrition in the department head request budget Anyone else? Ms. Park. Um, I guess I want to get away from salaries for a minute and, and talk a little bit about the resources. Um, and I guess this kind of goes into some of the CARES Act funding too. If we're looking at doing uh, potentially digital or some hybrid thereof, um, I know this past year we've used, I think, Discovery Ed via I don't know if I thought we, we got kind of a freebie year from what I understand. So was, was there any 
funding in there for any of the online components that we've used this past year via freebie, so to speak? As I understand it, there is no continuation of the Discovery Ed funding into the next school year. We do currently have uh, Edgenuity budgeted into this budget because it was in there for last year. That is the only online learning that we actually will have. That's 6 through 12. So that's a concern. And then um, with the textbook adoption, if we were able to do that, um, there would be online resources that could be purchased there, but that's in our ask for our additional budget for this year. So at right now, that's not uh, that's also not included. To complicate that matter further, the online textbooks that we've had in the past are no longer adopted textbooks. So those resources that we have paid for in the past to have online ELA textbooks in the high school, those will not be available to us as well. So again, six through twelve. Well, that's. The existing budget that we have isn't going to suffice for potentially what we need from a digital standpoint right. next year. And I think if we're purchasing, I don't know how many laptops, we iPads we talked about, what's the point in having a laptop if there is no online we're, We are completely in agreement with you. We are looking at other options on that. Um, as far as, you know, could we purchase a different option for K-5 that would give us a digital resource to, to utilize? The CARES Act very specifically states that we have to plan for learning digital or distance learning in the event of a closure or in the event of not starting school on time. It's very specific. That's the whole purpose of it. So we are looking at other options around that. Um, we do have some possibilities that would come in that we possibly could get out of the textbook line that exists this year, the 327,000 or whatever is in there. There are some things that we could look at there that would give us some digital resources that we could utilize. It would not be what the teachers um, approved on the textbook adoption. The total textbook adoption actually came in higher than what we had originally even budgeted at almost, if we purchased the textbook ad ELA adoption for K through 12, we'd be looking at about $2.1 million. Um, to get all the, every classroom, which I firmly believe we need that. I, I firmly believe um, if we want to improve instruction, we've got to get high quality resources into the hands of our teachers. Um, so if there's any way to get that, I, I, I push very much so for that, but we are looking at other options in the event that we can't um, get that. I mean, we understand the current budget situation. So I guess you're wanting to have the budget adopted in June, I mean at the June board meeting, is that right? Oh. I, I don't I mean I'm just saying with that with that piece not being in, not being known, I mean not having an amount, like I, I, I will not vote for this budget as long as there's nothing in there for digital because I don't see how we're going to be in compliance with CARES Act at this point. Well again, with the textbook money, we could purchase an online resource that would give us um, instruction K-5 in all four core subject areas. Um, we could look at Odysseyware. It is a part of Edgenuity. They recently purchased Edgenuity. I think we could get it for about $101,000. That would provide us with an online resource for grades K through 5. That what about the ones that we've used for the last year? I mean, do you all have a price on those? Just because, you know, parents did have to get used to using some of those things. So if we all of a sudden completely switch to another one just because we have a budget crunch, I don't know that that's necessarily the best thing for consistency in children's learning. Are either. you referring to like I ready and I forgot? I'm sorry, I did. I ready freckles. All the freckle all and those. all that kind of stuff was those things were provided free from the vendors to okay. us. And any of those things that were provided in response to COVID-19, they go away on June 30th. So sure. lots of vendors were putting things out there. Of course, lots of vendors are now contacting us and saying, "Hey, can you buy this?" now and and obviously we don't have the funding to purchase everything that was out there i right. did forget that we have purchased um online i ready right. but only for tier two and tier three so that is not enough to cover all of our students we could certainly explore what the cost and we will 
explore what the cost of adding the online component for um, the math for K-8 would be so that we could provide that. I, that would be ideal to keep the same curriculum so that right. when we're doing face-to-face -face or when we're doing distance, we're using the curriculum that students are engaging with at all times. Right. And then for the textbooks that we normally buy, the workbooks, those type of things for math? or Those are already purchased. The math books we've already got. They will be here. So we've already taken care of that. That's not part of this? No, that that's already been done. No, ma'am. Okay. So that, that 327 would allow us to get what we would need digital either I well I shouldn't say already because I don't know what the total cost was already but it would allow us to get an online option that we could do some instruction with okay. and if in the event that we did that we would be encouraging teachers to use those online resources throughout the school year so that if we did have to close students would already be familiar with those and teachers would also be familiar with them but at this point we're potentially looking at opening up maybe in a hybrid model with this same outdated resources that we have, including no online components for those outdated resources in ELA. We're looking at having digital programs that we did not have kids using last year potentially as our main option for next year if we do have to do distance learning again. If we have to go with the current budget, yes ma'am. I mean, that's us trying to be resourceful and find, the, find what we can to to provide instruction. It's not ideal, but... And again, I'm, I'm going to be very frank. This is why I come back to, if we've got to make cuts, guys, we got to make cuts. If we have to make cuts in people, we got to make cuts in people. I just don't see how we're going to provide a first-class education without the resources, especially knowing the environment that we're potentially opening up in in August. This budget's not going to do it, and it doesn't sound like we're prepared for that right now, even with the additional CARES funding, and that's scary to me. Mr. Moore. Okay, so I've I kind of two points, and I'll go with that. The, I'll go um, backwards on this. I, it, it is perfectly okay with me at this point to be passing a budget at the 11th hour, in my opinion, uh, simply because there are a lot of variables that are still up in the air that are coming from various places. To go with that too is I, I think we as a district have a lot of work to do on this budget. I know we have a number from the county commission they're saying they're going to fund. Um, I, I think I'll, I guess I'll be a little more blunt than Ms. Parker is being. It seems to me like our focus right now is on preserving the system and we are piecemealing education in at the back end and that is troubling to me. Was that closer to what you were saying <laughs> Ms. Parker? And that's what it's, it feels like and I understand that, that means some tough discussions. Um, on, on what that means as far as personnel and what that looks like. But I'm getting more and more uncomfortable the more we talk about this, that we are talking about finding literally pennies here and there to educate the kids, but there's zero discussion about the system itself. The system, as in this organization, seems to be just fine. We're not talking about really addressing it. We're just trying to piecemeal some books that we keep talking about every year, and I don't understand that. And to me, it seems like if we have a working number although that may be the number from last year or something similar to it, then there should be some hard work going into, and it may go into June as we have information on this, to look at what does education really need to look like. And that may mean up, you know, upsetting some apple carts in, in terms of what goes on in this district. Um, education's looking different, potentially, and probably. And I just, I just, I'm, we're back again to pulling and finding pennies to do books, and I just don't get it. Um, I'm not, that's not to get anybody. I'm kind of trying to look at everybody at once because I'm just, I'm very uncomfortable with that. It seems like we are just, it seems like we are just kicking the can down the road on this, that we're just going to try to do a budget. We know it's not going to work and we're just going to do a whole lot of budget amendments to try to figure it out. And maybe the uncle government will give us some extra more money so that we can try to make something fill in the holes and then try to go into fund balance to do that. And we still don't have a solid plan for what education is going to look like. I'm worried, even if we had the books, even if we had the digital resources, I don't think we've trained appropriately yet. As a matter of fact, I know we haven't, to be able to deliver that. Uh, I don't think we have a position. I, again, I'm, I know you guys have been working on it far more than I've looked at it, but from what I've seen, I don't think staff is prepared, as far as teaching staff, to teach from a distance, which is a whole separate issue from learning from a distance. And, you know, I don't know how to get there. And, you know, on a good year, it seems like that's going to take extra money just to address that part, even if we had, uh, you know, what we needed covered 
fully. We'd have to add money on top of that. Now, here we are in a deficit, a large one, you know, five, well, four and a half, five million dollars is what we're talking about potentially. It could be worse, Doug. I understand. I understand your number two could be conservative. I, I get that. We just don't know. So it could be even worse than what you're projecting. It could be better. But still, we're at a deficit. I don't feel like we're really addressing the problem, and I don't think we're looking at this any differently than we have in the past. And that bothers me as well. I don't think we're really taking a fresh look at what does education need to look like to make sure we're meeting the needs of the kids. We're still protecting the system and piecing the rest in on the back end. Mr. Sam. What is the the full teacher teacher package? The I mean, you you the benefits package, everything up per teacher amount. So it it depends on where that teacher's coming from, where they're at in their career. Um, but I do have a sheet that I brought. You can see that the, these are employer costs here. So you can see the percentage, the different types of people, uh, 250 per pay period per person on life, medical insurance, the average cost is $8,120 per person, Medicare is a set percentage, Social Security is a set percentage, unemployment is 42 per person. Oh, is it cutting off? Oh, okay. Let's see if we can do something like that. Let's do... Yeah, we could do that. There we go. So if you add all this together, it, it's usually around 20%. Um, so if you hire someone in at the bare bones minimum, you're looking kind of at about $50,000 if they're a bachelor fresh out of college, about $50,000 with the salary and benefits package. Um, there, there are different packages that you can pick on on the, the health insurance, but if, it's, if you're just funding yourself, it's fully covered. So the cost varies on that. Mr. Fulbright. Thank you. Did you say you used 27.5% for the adjustment for the virus? On sales tax. For sales tax. That's correct. Is that a number, I mean, and I trust your judgment, but is that a number you came up with or is that a formula provided by somebody at the state level, comptroller, or whatever? That's a number I came up with. Um, I've worked with, with the cities. The cities are working with a company called Navi Retail. Uh, I've received good feedback from one city about it. I've received bad feedback from another city about it. Their numbers are kind of sporadic. One says there's only a 13% decrease. The other city says there's a 30 to 40% decrease. Roughly so how much change yeah. is there from if you bump it 1% this way or 1% that way? It would be about um, $168,000. Okay. Yeah. The other question I had, and this is probably for somebody at the staff level, in the expenditure categories, are there anything, are there any specific ones legally that we cannot reduce? Now, I know there's a lot we don't want to reduce, but are there any legally that we cannot reduce? Legally, you can't reduce salaries. Yeah. Okay. You have to at least pay people what you paid them but the year before. But that could be addressed by not rehiring. That line item could come down by not rehiring yeah. someone who's retiring. You can you can completely get rid of travel. You can get rid of uh, you can get rid of um, supplies and materials in, in offices. Um, that's not really that much money. They can right. just use the supplies they already have. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, you can do all of those things. And I'm not saying I'm got anything on the chopping block. I just yeah. You're just know, curious. Because yeah. we got to do something. I mean, yeah. We can't go through this year after year. Thank you. Well, I mean, you're you're in the same boat as every other school district around us. Right. Okay. You know, Metro's got to cut 25 million. Wilson County's got to cut 10. So, um, you know, you're pretty much in the same boat. Mr. Moore and Ms. Ms. Ventura is about to have a stroke back there, so I don't know whether you want to let her come on up here and 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 talk. I'm, we don't have anybody medical here to. Oh yeah, we do. <laughs> Ms. Hopkins is here. <laughs> That's correct. Um, legally, uh, I have a maintenance of, of effort requirement in order to receive my federal funds. Now, does it mean that you can cut in some way yes and in some way no? You have to spend the exact same amount 
Now that never, that's never a problem because we always have a step raise or we always have a, but you could not cut me any lower than whatever I have spent in 141 total this year. So if I could ask, if we didn't have an excess in fund balance right now, what other things would we be talking about as far as making this work? And I'm being a little bit rhetorical with that question, so I'll cut myself off on that. I know there are other, other districts that are talking about consolidating schools. There are other districts that are talking about cutting positions and, and not hiring them. Um, there are other, it, there's a lot of things that it, I just want to know what else would, could we look at to do? I'm not saying I want to do these things. These are ugly decisions. There's, you know, some of these decisions would mean uh, as an impact on kids would be larger class sizes is where we would end up having to deal with that. And what does that look like? Again, none of these are pretty things to talk about, but again, I, I, I'm worried that, you know, because we happen to have a decent amount of money in, in fund balance that we're kind of avoiding some things just because we have it there. And that may be fine this year. Um, what do you do next year? Yeah. Um, because again, there's a lot of things we're still not solving with this. So if those are somewhat rhetorical, but if you want to answer any of those, feel free. Yeah. yeah. Well, th yes, thank you. I, and, and I mean, Mr. Moore, everything's on the chopping block. Basically, everything is. In, in Metro Nashville, they did. They consolidated four schools, and they made the vote last night to do that. Um, so it's something you need to consider, not only, not only what you need to do now, but also what's going to happen down the road and the perception that's going to be there. So when I sent you the email this morning and I said, I think your recommendation is to hold the line, is because teachers all around Middle Tennessee are watching and waiting to see what their schools are doing. For example, Wilson County cut a whole bunch of positions. They just had another meeting this week as they scraped together to find more money to put people back in those positions. And I think what's happening right now is teachers are watching across the mid-state which districts are honoring people because those are going to be the ones that I think that will not struggle in the coming years to find positions because as other districts cut them, they're going to be looking for their next home and Murray County could be their home. And this is not a comfortable position to be in where you guys, this is, this is going back to May of 18 where I told you guys, you got one of two things. You got personnel or you got programs. That's it. Those are the only two big buckets you have that you're going to get that kind of, that kind of, you know, that kind of savings out of. And personally, I think it's I think it's doing whatever you can right now to, to hold the line and move forward because nobody knows what next week is going to bring or what next month is going to bring. And Ms. Hopkins even knows that being in the medical field. We don't know what's going to happen over the next week or the next couple months. But I think if you guys honor people, I think that's going to take you further in the long run. But that's just a recommendation. It's just something for you to consider. But I'm real, I, think it's it's part. I, think it's I, I just want to go back to reminding this board what our mission is and our mission is to educate every student for life and if that means employing 10,000 people let's employ 10,000 people but at the end of the day we have to figure out what these kids need to be educated and I think that has to come first and quite frankly I don't think it has in the last few years. Um, I mean, we, we cut $500, I mean, $500,000 from textbooks when they're in the middle of a pandemic and children didn't have textbooks. Were they educated? So I just hope that we continue to remember what our mission is. And, and I don't, I don't want to hurt people, but there are little people that we're responsible for, not just big people. So I hope we remember that. Mr. Fulbright. When we discuss the uh, right sizing of staff, that goes into effect year after this coming, correct? So that will be one step, if I understood that right, that could address some of this, but it's not going to address this in the coming year. So we do have that to consider as well. Uh, I think that was all I had to say. Thank you. It seems to me, though, the discussion of people retiring, that was one of the ways that we were going to make right-sizing work. I don't know why you couldn't uh, look at it at now as, as a way in which, I mean, we're in this situation now, that would be a, a time to start that. If we, if we want to do it in such a way that we're not hiring a brand new person coming in here, giving them uh, benefits and everything, it would now would be the time through retirees, I think, to start that process. 
and we don't know how many that is. Do you have it now? Yeah, we just got an email. Um, there is about 10 people that we've received so far. That's not everybody. We may get some more this week since uh, the last day of school was just the 19th. So, uh, Mr. Lacone. I just wanted to uh, let everybody know I do have the food service and capital projects budget on hand. Uh, if you do want to uh, send any information over to your next meeting, I, I'm, I've heard that, you know, I don't know what the decision is on 141 yet, but um, this is the 143 budget. And then we've also got over here uh, the capital budget. Hold on one second. The capital worksheet budget that explains detail and also an overview of everything proposed. So if you all wanted to look at that tonight, I've got it. Okay. I think we need to make some sort of decision going forward as to what we what the expectation is. If you're not ready to vote on a budget yet at the next meeting, then what do we need to see before we are ready to vote on a budget? Uh, and when can we see it? I'll let you speak, Ms. Hopkins. Excuse me. Oh, I was just going to say... Um, I was in cardiology uh, nurse tech, now I'm behind the desk, so I would yield to a nurse or a paramedic, okay? Um, but, um, um, <laughs> so, um, um, but I was going to say that, though, uh, if we all could just take a breath and just breathe, you know, I won't count anybody's respirations, but, um, uh, <laughs> yeah. um, but, it, it is really, um, we just have to be mindful. We are in a, in a place nobody's ever been here before. And so we have to just, you know, do the best we can with what we have and know where we are. But like we talk about, you know, staffing and employees and that kind of thing, we have to think about there's, you know, been churches that have opened up. They shut back down. Somebody got sick, you know. Um, we're living in that time, and like they said, CDC is reporting, you know, that, in time, they're thinking this thing is going to circle back around in the fall. And so, therefore, we are looking at that hybrid model, but possibly the model of if we are back at orders to stay home and kids are educated, you know, digitally. Um, and we need to, you know, be looking in that avenue, like we've been talking about, about the, um, you know, what, we, what can we do to move forward with knowing that, uh, digital is the way. I mean, it's just the way it's trending. It's the way it's going, and so we can be prepared if that was, you know, was to happen. Because it's it's where we are. It's it's where we are. Okay, we know that we know what the commission will give us. We know that's a given. We know what it'll take with that figure with step raises. So in order to get some of the things that we need to have, then there need to be cuts within that fi figure. That's, that's what we're saying, right? It, in order to increase taxes or, do it, or try, to, to, try to make sure that, that we have things that we need for the kids in the fall. Um, so when do you want, what do you want them to bring to us? What do you need for us to move forward, to, to move this on or to just sit back and like, our Russians and say, mm, not going to do that. I'm not going to vote on that. No, you know, that's that's counterproductive to moving us forward. We we've got to say, okay, what do you need? What do you guys need? What do they need to bring us? What, where do we need to get to that place that we can say, this is the budget we can live with, because we have to live with it. But it's going to provide the things that we need. What do we need? Well, I would ask department heads to go back and look again and see, see what can be cut even further. I, I mean, I know we've been told they're, they've cut as far as they can, but mm -hmm. go back and see, see if the ones who are retiring can not be hired back. See if there's a position that needs to be cut can be cut I don't I don't like cutting positions but I'm I'm kind of with the ones I've heard earlier I, I 
I have a daughter, a second grader. We need materials in our in her hands. She was sent home without anything, so we don't have internet at my house. I'm I'm in I'm in the boat where we need something, so I'm I'm there. I, I think we need to figure out where to save money to get materials. Ms. Parker was next. I know. Do you want me to let Mr. Fulbright see it? Will you go ahead? Yeah. Mine's still, mine's still. <laughs> yes, I would like to see kind of as firm a number as you can get where if we didn't replace anybody who's retiring roughly, as non-roughly as possible, uh, see what that figure is and how that affects next year's budget. I would also echo what Mr. Sims said. If we don't have the department heads cut what they feel like they can, we're going to end up doing it. And if I were a department head, I would rather do it myself than have somebody who doesn't really know what's going on make that decision. So, I mean, that's just the reality of where we're sitting. Uh, but that's the number you asked what I wanted to see. That's what I would like to see. And I think that would be a, a more informed decision. And, Doug, I'd just like you to continue to meditate and pray on that 27 and a half number. Yeah. I think that could... Um, <laughs> Provide a little bit of a uh, little bit of <laughs> guidance for us as we go go through that. Thank you. I will. <laughs> Ms. Parker will and have. Um, I, I know we've talked about the retirees. What about resignations and non-renewals? Or is that included? As That's well? what I was just about to ask. Do you all just want retirees, or do you want all vacancies as well? And just put uh, we can put in there you know what the retiree salary was and I was thinking we could probably put the position so that way you understand like okay so if it's a grade three teacher or grade four teacher you've got to have a replacement right. versus because yeah. I'm really yeah. not sure what we're looking at at the moment right but, um, we'll That's put as much yeah. okay we'll put that vacancies and um, retirees in there um, I will go back to I guess enough first got on the board, we talked a lot about fund balance and making sure that we weren't spending it on recurring expenses. Mm -hmm. And I think that really overestimating attrition and things like that has got us into a situation where we're using fund balance to pay for a raise. And I mean, those numbers got worse this year, not better. So I don't really know how we're going to continue to do that because I think we're just compounding a problem. So. I don't know how we can how we can sort that out, but we really need to be paying for one-time expenses out of fund balance. I feel like we got to get back to to doing that. The other thing is, I did want to go with the expenditure items that you guys had listed. It, and I don't know if I'm looking at it wrong, but it looked like on um, department head request in proposal two, and I'm looking at alternative instruction line seven one 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 five zero. It looks like there's a decrease in what the department had asked for versus what we had budgeted last year. And that was the case for that one, as well as regular instruction and regular capital outlay. I don't know if those numbers got moved to other things that are in other parts of other departments, but um, if I don't know if that's a place where we could start to look at, because that totals up almost $500,000. Yes, I, I can answer that. Um, and, and obviously, you know, we're we're looking at, at, at grave times even with just the same as last year budget. But the department head request budget is e exactly what we received from the department head. So it, they gave us number by line. And so that's what, what's in there. Um, and that's why uh, some of them are, are here to speak on why it is what it is. Uh, there are notes included that we've shared, Eric has, um, and the instruction side has on why they decreased a certain line and raised another. So I just took what they gave me and, and said, if this is what you want, this is what I'll put in front of the board and let's move on. Yeah. Mr. Moore. Did, he, did you want to finish? I, I did have uh, something to say. Um, to, to your point, we're going to gather that data. But uh, something to protect us from ourselves uh, that we have that I've passed on the, on the county side we, and we've worked on and on our debt service fund is a fund balance policy. 
Um, the general fund on the 101 side has a fund balance that is specifically for global pandemics, earthquakes, tornadoes, and it can't be spent unless one of those events occur. And so it protects the school board from, or, or the commission from spending that money with their normal use. Um, but we've gotten in a position to where, you know, when I came over here, the budget that was passed the previous year used fund balance. Technically, the state shouldn't have even passed the budget. I hate to say that, but they did, and I'm glad they did because you, you got to have one. But, <laughs> but you know, to, I'm glad that we have gotten away from the tax anticipation note, but I 100% think we need one this year. The good thing about the decrease in sales tax revenue, and there's no good thing really, but is that you don't lose $4.6 million on day one. It's a slow gradual process and if if things do turn to get better it'll slowly and gradually uh, get better but over a year's time if, if things continue the way that they are it, we are looking at a, a decrease but I just cash flow is, is really important and if the school board I, I've already thought about putting together a fund balance policy to help justify certain things that, that you would decide on what you want to allocate that money for or restrict it for so that it can only be used for certain purposes. You can even um, have an additional that you have committed for a certain reason just for instruction, textbooks and uh, digital learning initiatives. And so um, if we can rebound from, from this pandemic and come back next year and funding looks better and we can kind of build on that and make plans behind the money rather than just spending every dollar we get it immediately as it comes in because we've kind of been behind on our funding then we can have a plan and have a strategy to protect us from ourselves and for future school boards to come so like that protect us from ourselves <laughs> exactly that's that's exact that's right mr moore okay I'll, I'll wrap it up closely on, on my stuff um i would like to see a budget that comes back that doesn't use fund balance to budget it at all and that's i know that's tough and i know that's very hard and i would like to see a budget that is focused first on the education of the children and then the rest of it falls in after that um and i would yeah i'll, I'll leave it at that uh, as far as timeline that was the other thing we talked about um, you're saying they want it by June 30th. Was that? that I, I I don't have I can't pull it out right now. I sent you all the timeline that Scott had, and that was to he wanted it June the 8th for oh, the budget meeting, and then that would give them time, and then it has to be the comptroller by okay, the 30th. Okay, I'm not going to be rude to the commissioner right now, but I mean, what's the what's the actual date we need this by? Technically, not for the commission. I'm yeah. talking about for the comptroller. Technically, they strongly encourage June 30th, okay. and, and I don't know what consequence that means, but we could go past it. I would personally like us to wait as long as humanly possible. Okay. And I know that may put the county commission having to have a special call meeting, and I think under the circumstances we can all work with that right. if they have to do that as well. I would like for us to wait as long as possible for staff to put some more work into this and for us to maybe get some more clarification from the federal government and the states on what maybe they're looking and the at BEP, as well. the, and the, the funds BEP from the BEP. And the BEP would be nice as well. Right. So as, if, as long as we want to put this off, I'm happy with. Okay. Uh, I just want to say, I'm okay waiting a little while, but I don't want us to wait until the 11th hour because when we do that, that's when we end up cutting a half a million dollars from textbooks. That's what we did last year. Okay. Because we were up against a huge I think this deadline. is a good discussion point then. <laughs> Midway through June, do we need to reconvene it on then? I mean, I'm, I'm kind of up to staff on when they get additional information is where I'm kind of up in the air. I think that's where I am. And I agree with you completely. I don't want to be on the 29th having a budget review meeting and then trying to do a special call right after that. That's not what I'm looking well, for. Just going to be un unpopular with Th they are. So I agree. I mean, I think we're going to need more than well, that. And I think, I think no, you guys I, I think in terms of these cuts and, and the impact that it – that needs to be done. You just don't want to wait till after June the 30th and school starts. I, I don't. You know, in my mind, I'm thinking if we could come back in, in maybe two weeks or so. I don't have a I'd specific date. I'd say in two date. weeks. Let's, let's I want to give staff some time to really, really look at this. Our meeting and, and is the first. And see what they can do. I, 
I do think you could bring the that we could vote on the cafeteria budget and the and the uh, capital, um, capital budget capital budget and get that out of the way and then maybe schedule a uh, budget meeting the week of the eighth. We you know, uh, Doug. Our, our next work session is the fifteenth. Would you all be able to come back maybe the week of the eighth sometime in that? The, the second week in June with a, a, a new look at the budget as to what any cuts that if we can uh, do this? Yes. Okay. The, that, that's uh, fairly easy, I think. The, the finding the cuts will, won't be, but uh, getting you information uh, getting you information by that time, yes. And, and I talked to Scott. The application for CARES Act comes out the 26th of May. So, so we're in theory we're supposed to be able to apply for those funds in six days so they can't give us zero guidance and say go ahead and apply <laughs> it's a possibility but they, well, they shouldn't <laughs> but, so, i thought you all were going to get to go to a meeting yeah. and they pushed it back okay June 8th, okay? Huh? Or the 11th? What? Which one? I heard two two things. What? Are we, are we saying we wouldn't have enough information by the 4th that week so we could at least make an attempt to get it to the commission by the time that was requested? The, the budget meeting is the 4th, isn't it? That's correct. Uh, the budget meeting is the 4th, but um, if we did something, I guess For we could have something by the 3rd. The third? The eighth is the regular budget committee. Uh, there's okay. a special call budget meeting on the fourth. So when, was the, when did they want the budget submitted? The fourth, yeah. But if we can have the eighth, I'm, I'm sure uh, the chairman could adjust to the, the school board as long as it's well, in that frame. Well, then we need to meet that week. Okay. Well, I just uh, think that, that we need to make sure that we're making every effort. If we don't have the information, we don't have the information. We're not going to turn in half half a budget but we also don't want to sit around and just say well we're waiting maybe hopefully we should have it by then but you know we want to make sure we're making a good effort um, so with that said that helps nothing so I'll let y'all decide <laughs> go back they're having the they want it by the fourth all right we could have a meeting by the third but we may not have it then either but you would be able to bring us back some of these I can, on the third, uh, we should, as of right now, have some CARES Act guidance, hopefully, and um, we we should be able to make some cuts in that time. I, I mean, I think it's reasonable to, to look at the calendar and, and see that that's two weeks. So, I mean, I think we can put Can we call it a call it. special if we come to the point where, yeah, okay, we'll just have a call special on the third, right, six o'clock here. Yeah, and it, if you see that that you're, it's not possible, then we'll we'll put it till the next week. But we we're making the effort as, as best we can, and uh, that's all we can do. If we don't have the if we don't have the figures and it doesn't work, then you know they've got to understand that. Anything else? Can I make one ask. Yes, please. Just while I have you here. Uh, I know we talked the other night about budget amendments and try if we added anything before the board meeting, doing it before the weekend. We have had discussions with the state, and I told you the other night because of um, cancellations and changes, we had to redo our Safe Schools grant. It is all grant money, but we actually talked with Doug's office since we met Monday night, and we have more coming back than we initially thought. We have an item that's an over is a, an over ten thousand purchase that we need to do that we would like to ask you to do, can we add that to the budget and just or, or to the board meeting? Because if not, we won't have it. We won't be able to do it until July, and we have to have this money spent by June 30th. You've got time. We have well, we just wanted to make it. sure yeah. that, that since we've it already done the work session, I just wanted to make sure no. we didn't add something. It and just then won't you be say, on consent. Okay, yes, ma'am. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I just that, wanted to make that sure. That was my request, was as long as it's on consent, and even if it wasn't, as long as it's separated in there right. showing that this was added after that, and it's clearly it needs to be on Noted the agenda 
the full week before the meeting. Well, we will, the other thing, we will have it on by the end of this week. Okay. But I told them today I just wanted to make it sure. Won't, it won't even take until Tuesday night. Okay. So. Thank you. Just while you were here, it was an easier question okay. to ask with yeah. everyone. Ms. Parker. Well, and I was going to say, too, on, on when things get added closer to even our work session, it would just be really helpful if, you know, Got if, it's at, if it's added after the Tuesday or Wednesday that it gets posted, that we just get an email. Okay. Because you don't know when I looked at the work session agenda. Right. And so if I looked at it on Wednesday and you had something on Friday, it's a surprise to me when I get when I'm looking at it, and I don't feel like I should have to check it every single right. day. So it just would be helpful from staff if if you do decide to add something after the work session or before the meeting, and it's not going to be on consent or whatnot. If we just kind of get a heads up via email. We generally always it. ask, can we do it? And we usually talk to Miss Kinzer, but since you're all here, it was just easier to make that question. I'm just saying, Yeah. Okay. And but now Shipper did point out to you that because we'd be clean up this time that you probably will have some budget to, uh, but at, by that Friday before the meeting so expect that. Yeah we've already had a few schools reach out to us after the meeting um, asking for a couple of more items and stuff so we'll probably have I've already got three from the next meeting already as of today. Any other business? Well then we are adjourned.